Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Promise. You welcome back to a brand new video. Now, what I forgot today is another One Piece manga arc review. Now, I believe that it was about one month ago where I uploaded my Water 7 arc review. Of course, this is my first ever read through of the One Piece manga, so I've been doing reviews every time I finish a whole saga. And I promise that from here on out, I'm going to do one of these review videos every single time I finish one of these sagas. So, of course, the next one in line that we're going to be talking about today is Thriller Bark. I think that Thriller Bark is a little bit of a more controversial saga in the whole grand scheme of the One Piece manga, at least it is to the fans. So I'm very excited to give my personal opinions about what I thought about this four volume saga today in this video. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. Also, if you're shopping on right stuff, then make sure to use my affiliate link to be linked down in the description below. You get manga for amazing prices. You also help support the channel. But with all that being said, without any further ado, let's get right into the Thriller Bark review. Bars. All right, so just for the record, the volumes I'm going to be talking about, you know, the contents of the volumes I'm going to be talking about is volumes 46 through 69, and then the beginning of volume 50, which is basically the final fight of the Thriller Bark Saga. So for volume 50, I'm just going to be talking about things up until the Kuma fight and nothing after that, because of course, that's the next arc. But yeah, like I kind of said earlier, I went into Thriller Bark with some mixed opinions that I had heard from the community. Some people think that Thriller Bark is, you know, a pretty uneventful and boring arc, whereas some people think that's kind of a hidden gem. And I gotta say that after finishing it, I think I more so align with the latter group of people who think that Thriller Bark is honestly pretty underrated. So I'm gonna talk about a few reasons why I think this is the case. So of course, at the beginning of this arc, we're introduced to a new character, of course, that being Brooke, who ate the, I believe is called the Revive, Revive Fruit. And the backstory that Brooke has to share alongside with the powers of his fruit, where he was revived by the power of the Devil Fruit, but none of his crewmates were there alongside with him. So he basically just floated around in the ocean on this abandoned ghost ship by himself for like 50 years. Honestly, really sad, but of course I won't be getting too much into his backstory as that's mainly in the later part of Volume 50, which is not Thriller Bark technically. But even though Brooke is the new introduction to the cast, in this arc, we don't get to see, you know, a whole lot of him. He's on screen, or I guess on the page, for a decent amount of time, but a lot of the time, he's off doing his own thing. In my opinion, the main focus of this arc is just on the Straw Hats minus Brooke, as they're kind of just doing this little side quest on Thriller Bark after their shadows were stolen. And this is where I can understand why a lot of people think that Thriller Bark may be a little bit uneventful, that nothing really happens, because it is pretty true that the contents of this arc don't really affect the overall story that much, at least I don't think they will from where I'm at right now. What Thriller Bark felt like to me was a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a bridge in between two bigger arcs, obviously having Water 7 Saga, which is one of the most big and monumental sagas in the entirety of the series, and of course the following arcs, which I believe will be a little bit more plot driven, such as Impel Down and Paramount War up until New World. And even though there weren't a whole lot of really big, you know, plot events in Thriller Bark, I think there are a lot of really amazing moments, which is one of the reasons why I think that Thriller Bark is kind of unrated. Some of my favorite moments from this arc include obviously the introduction of Brooke, as well as Zoro getting his new sword from the zombie that had Brooke's shadow. The reveal of Ors I thought was honestly really, really cool as you get to see that spread of him in that room. I mean, just such a massive, massive zombie and just the scale of everything, even compared to Gecko Moira is really incredible. Not to mention the fight between Oars and the Straw Hats, which I thought was really, really cool. My favorite moment from this fight, of course, being the part when all the Straw Hats, for the most part, are down for the count after fighting Oars, and he finally gets back up. But then, just like him, all the Straw Hats get right back up for one final attack. I thought that was really awesome. And I'm sure that there are more of these minor events in Thriller Bark that I'm forgetting to talk about in this video. Like, for example, uh, when Luffy gets all those shadows, and he fights Oros, you know, he has that power up, you know, where he's all juiced up looking like the Incredible Hulk. I mean, that's just another moment that I forgot to talk about, and I'm sure there are more. And it's for all of these reasons why I think that though Thriller Bark is not the most eventful in the grand scheme of the plot, at least not as far as I'm aware, there are a lot of really cool moments that stuck out to me and will make Thriller Bark a pretty memorable part of my One Piece journey. And the other thing that I really enjoyed about Thriller Bark is the amount of creativity that you see Oda has that shines through, especially in the character designs of the characters in Thriller Bark. For example, right at the beginning of this arc when they discover that Thriller Bark is full of zombies and you know they're being chased around by these hordes. If you really look at the artwork, you'll see, you know, a very diverse group of zombies. You know, none of them look exactly alike. They're all very individualized. They all have different little details as well as in some cases, different personality traits. And uh, yeah, as well as the zombies, you also have the Hydra, 
You have Auras, of course, the big massive zombie. I also thought that the character designs of Gecko Moira and that one girl with the depression ghost, I thought that their character designs were very interesting and unique and honestly pretty badass. And of course, there were a handful of character designs that I wasn't too keen on, especially in this arc, such as, you know, the leopard guy or the hog Lola. But even though I wasn't a huge fan of some of these character designs, it just furthers the point that Oda is extremely talented and creative when it comes to creating a very diverse and pretty memorable cast of characters being such a massive cast already as it is. Now there were a few things that I didn't necessarily like about Thriller Bark, of course I already mentioned a couple of character designs, but aside from that, I thought that the final fight with Gekko Moira after he swallows like a thousand shadows, I thought that that fight was a little bit underwhelming for basically the final fight of the arc. I also thought that the beginning of the arc was a little bit slow, and of course that's understandable as they have to build it up a little bit before the action really happens, and when the action happens, boy does it happen. I personally really enjoyed the later volumes of this arc, so you know, I can understand why the beginning was a little bit slow in my opinion. But like I said earlier, even though I really did enjoy the special moments from this arc, I don't think that there's a whole lot of content to really dive into and dissect, at least I don't think there is, until maybe some foreshadowing will come into effect later that I just don't know about yet, but that's basically what I have to talk about for Thriller Bark. I really did enjoy it, even though it may be lacking a little bit of content, I thought it was super special and honestly super enjoyable. And for my next One Piece video, I may be merging together um, Sabody and maybe Impel Down and perhaps Paramount War Arc into one video because they are pretty short. But if you guys think that's a bad idea or you have some other ideas on what I should do for the smaller saga and how I should do the videos for them, definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys think I should do. But yeah, that's basically gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah, this has been The Promji. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as always, hope to catch you in the next one.